Welcome to Think Tank, the podcast. I'm Steve Adubato, and joining me in the East Main Media Studio is Nicole Swinnerton, the senior producer of Think Tank, the broadcast, and Mary Gamba, one of our longtime colleagues. We doing okay today? Doing great. Doing well. A little hot, a little yep. hot outside while we're taping, but this... That's okay, but it's cool in here. It's going to get hotter in about a second. <laughs> Real quick, we're going to do something on sports. There are two sports figures. You love basketball. You love soccer. Nicole, anything else? I love football, too. And Mary <laughs> Giants. is All obsessed hockey. with hockey. I know. She's the quintessential hockey mom <laughs> in a very good way. Sometimes. Okay, yes. good. And she's also one of the parents who never causes a problem on the never. ice. Never. So uh, let folks know how people can find Think Tank, the podcast, as we talk about sports today. Absolutely. So to hear more Think Tank podcasts, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Google Play. You can visit our website at steveadubato.org. That's A-D-U-B-A-T-O. And you can also follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato and on Facebook at Steve Adubato PhD to check out all of our amazing content. Check this out. So we have two interesting sports figures. One is Greg Herenda, who is the head coach of Fairleigh Dickinson University men's basketball team. What's fascinating about them is that they were a really bad team for a long time. And he talks about the leadership, the character, the integrity, the hard work, the perseverance, and the how he brought the team together to actually go from, a, frankly, a crappy team to one that made it to the NCAA big dance. And won their first game. And they won their first game. And the year before, he's at the Final Four. And he gets really sick at the Final Four game as a coach watching somebody else is in the hospital. I think he has blood clots. Bad things happen. And he talks about how the recovery changed his life. Yes. Yeah, right? like that was inspiring to you, Nicole? Oh, very inspiring. That was a really scary process that he had to go through. And he said that his players were one of the biggest reasons he needed to get healthy and get back to the team. So that's a great relationship to have with the team. And the other one is Luis Robles. Luis Robles is the captain and goalkeeper of the New York Red Bulls. Mary, that is not a hockey team. That is not a hockey team, although their arena is right next to the Prudential Arena as well, the Red Bull Stadium, as you know, correct? They're a professional soccer team. They sure are, yes. I'm super impressed. Again, I get my news on Twitter, as we've talked about before. But seeing the the crowds that they get and the support that they get for the Red Bulls, but also all of the amazing things that they're doing. Just literally today, I saw uh, something that the Red Bulls was doing, partnering with the Special Olympics and giving those kids an opportunity to play on their field. Things like that are just why sports, to me, are amazing. They're, they're involved in the community. They're, they're involved in the community. They're also involved in Hackensack Meridian Health, one of our longtime partners and colleagues. Mm -hmm. They did some work with them with the Tackle Kids Cancer Initiative and some other work there as well. Yeah, absolutely. They did. And and really just working together with, say, the Children's Hospital, as you had mentioned, through Hackensack Meridian Health, they just bring people together. They not only focus on the sport, but through Tackle Kids Cancer, they give a huge donation every time. When they do something good. When they do something good. That's all we too, need to know. Yeah, too often many sports organizations get consumed with themselves, their players, and they simply put our giving back. Love it. So this is Think Tank, the podcast. It's a different one with two different leaders in sports. Greg Horrenda, the head coach of the Fairleigh Dickens University basketball team. By the way, what are they called, Nicole? The what? The Knights. Oh, wow. You knew that. Mm -hmm. And Luis Robles, who is the captain and goalkeeper of the New York Red Bulls. This, again, is another terrific, compelling edition of Think Tank, the podcast. I'm Steve Adubato. Check it out. There he is on camera. Greg Carenda, he's the head coach of Fairleigh Dickens University men's basketball team, and they are called the what? The Knights. The Knights. The Knights. The, the, what are you, look at you pointing over here. By the way, here it is. It's FDU. <laughs> and because this is PBS, no disrespect. You got to put it We're on. That's okay. Patty, could you take this? We cannot plug. We well, don't we, plug. We got, the, we got the plug in, but. That's it. We now, are the FDU Knights at, in Hackensack and Teaneck campus. You took over 2013. Yes, I did. And you guys went to the dance. The big dance yes. of 64 in when? 2016 was the first time. It was my third year. We had the third youngest team in America, and, and Steve, it kind of came out of nowhere. The previous year, we lost 15 straight basketball games. 15. Um, but we had good players, good young kids. We were changing the culture, um, and then we won it. And we went to Dayton, Ohio, uh, and played Florida Gulf Coast, and it didn't go well. And we lost our first round, and our goal was to get back. And we just got back in 2019, and we got to Dayton and won a game. And it was his first uh, victory in the school's history in the NCAA tournament. And, and here I sit, a very lucky, lucky man, a lucky coach. For those who have never experienced 
the NCAA tournament other than being fans. And, yes. Uh, uh, we're Seton Hall fans. I just need to disclose that. True. I know you know that. And you True. have a connection to Seton Hall? Yeah, I was an assistant there for, for three years. For the great George Blaney. The, 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 the legendary George Blaney. And I hired uh, Grant Bill Meyer, who's the assistant now for Kevin. That's right. And Bruce Hamburger is my associate head coach. So there's, you got there's a some lineage. There. So here's the thing. For those yes. of us who don't really know, how exciting is it being at the Yes. Dance? It's, it's more than you think. It is? It's not? No, it's it, more. It's more than what you think it's it is. It's more. It's more. Because? Uh, because you work your whole life and, and for that moment, and they talk about the one shining moment, and it's not only the team that wins it, it's for every player that participates and every fan that follows and every coach that dreams. Uh, and you just can't sleep. You can't because you're in an elite group and uh, it's just very exciting. It's rewarding. It's exciting. It's, it's Let's so... Let's perspective. Sorry for interrupting. Uh, 64 yeah. teams. How many teams in the country play? Well, there's actually 64 60... teams plus the f first four yes. that are in. So there's 68. 68. Go ahead. And there's just about 366. So, yeah, so it's, it's, it's not, not easy. They don't hand it to you. No. That's for sure. And especially <clears throat> when I took over the program at Fairleigh Dickinson, uh, it wasn't in the best stead. And um, it's work. And it's the, the time that you put in and, and the, the greatest thing, Steve, to be honest with you, that makes it euphoric for a coach is seeing the players enjoy it. Because these kids, man, I've got the greatest kids in the world and they are so deserving. They work so hard. And when they're happy and their families are happy and our fans and our president, and our athletic director, it's a team. And uh, we, we had a great team this year and we have a great program uh, and we have success uh, looking forward as well I hope I'm a student of leadership yes sports and leadership yes is oh, you, you got to walk the walk uh, you know you have to be in there with these guys and they have to believe and I've co I played high school basketball uh, at St. Peter's prep I know you're a Seton Hall prep we have a lot of like <laughs> connections a lot of connections a little a rivalry, some, some yeah. rivalries too I was but an SS Catholic guy back in the day. Our school's closed now. How yes. good was SS Catholic in a parochial A? Oh, my God. How good? <laughs> Very Tremendous. good. Very good. But leadership is, is doing, it's being, it's, and it's a connection. Now you need to have a connection with your players. When I grew up, my coaches hollered at us and Really? I can't at relate. <laughs> <laughs> and now you have to control and you have to... Yes, you do. But it you, has to like, be, you can't go old school on these no, kids. No, But it has to be real. Look at your hugging kids right there. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's Nadi Basiri. And, and he played two minutes in, in the NCAA tournament game. And, and he just got offered a, a big-time business job wow. just before this taping I found out. So it's, it's way more than uh, basketball. It's, it's life. And, there, and when you have a connection with people... The synergy between my, myself and my players and my staff and our alums and the university, and it capsulizes in the tournament, but it's, it, it, it lasts forever. We have a player that just got um, signed for the Utah Jazz to play in their summer league. He came to me uh, as a 17-year-old young man that had no scholarships and averaged four points uh, a game as a freshman, and now he's with the Utah Jazz, darn L.A. What's that do for you? So, it, it, it says what we're doing the right things. I have good assistants. We, we, we recruit the right players, and we do it the right way. And that's why, you know, sometimes people watch college basketball, and, and we don't have the greatest light right now as basketball coaches because things Stuff have transpired. Happens. And ethics matter. But that, but and how you play the game matters. And some of your colleagues don't play the game the right way. I really think it's a small, minute group. I really do. The coaches that I see on the road and that I've worked with and that I've hired, we do it the old-fashioned way. We just go out and we get good players. Uh, a we, lot of them from New Jersey? Most of, most of them. I hired Dwayne Lee from St. Anthony's and Bruce from um, Seton Hall and there's New Jersey. Mike Fratello has been in our gym. Uh, you know, Michael Korn lives up the street. Kerry Kittles. Oh, wait, wait, who played... Michael Corn, I'll tell you what, you're bringing me back. Yes. These are guys who play well, from old, I'm yeah, old. In Jersey City days. Yes. Right? Yes. They played at Hudson Catholic. Yes. I remember these guys. Yeah, you're good. So how about this? April 2018, you're at the Final Four of San Antonio, Texas. What happens? Whew, wow. Uh, I'm walking with my son, who we, I've taken him now for a long time, over a decade, and I couldn't walk any longer. My leg was swollen, had pain. 
and I tried to continue to walk on the river walk, and uh, I couldn't do it. And my wife wanted to go to the hospital, and I said, let me just elevate it, and, you know, in the morning we'll figure it out. In the morning it was bigger, um, and uh, we were lucky to go to uh, Methodist uh, Metropolitan Hospital where Greg Silas, the CEO and of the hospital, came and visited me every day. But I had two major blood clots, one on my thigh and one on my abdomen, um, and they couldn't put a stent above it to keep it from going to my lungs or my heart or my brain, and it was scary. Do you know if you were going to live or die? I didn't want to die in Texas. <laughs> I've told this to people before. Don't, don't I wanted that. to get... No, we're not seeing in Texas, but don't say that. I, wa- no, I love Texas. I love it, but I wanted to get... I, f- I wasn't sure. I, when, and when you're laying there and you have 104.5 fever, and the one time that I was worried was my blood pressure dropped really low, and I thought it was something was wrong with the machine. And the, she said, well, how do you feel, the nurse? And I'm, she said, sit up a little bit. And I tried to sit up, and... If I was standing up, I would have fell down. So I was, uh, but I got tremendous care um, from all, from coaches, from my staff, but from my players, but my wife and my son were there behind. They, How they long was that rehab? Me. Several months? It was a six month rehab. And oh, still boy. to this day, I'm still, you know, wor- you have to, you know, you have to work at it. Does, does the, let me ask you this that health scare like that, winning that game. In a yeah, tournament, right? A year later, right? No, it's well, no. I know. I was just. The, the, I'll never forget, Steve. The Michigan Villanova championship game was on in my room. That's when I was in intensive care, and I couldn't watch it. So if you think back, I couldn't even watch a game, and then to the next year to win a game in the tournament that I couldn't watch. There's there's a, a guardian angel uh, looking over me and my mother. It was my best friend, uh, my best friend, and I was quoted as uh, in, in, in my commencement address as saying her famous words were, always ring the doorbell with your elbows, and that's why I brought you a hat. At FDU you did that. I'm sorry. At FDU. That's okay. What'd you say again? Always ring the doorbell with your elbows. So when I came here today, I brought you that hat, and I, I when I go to the tournament, I've, you've got to bring something in life. There are too many... There are too many takers and not enough givers. And my mother was a giver, and I try to just be a little bit like her and my dad. And, and I think it rubs off on my players. Greg Arenda is the head coach at Fairleigh Dickinson University's men's basketball program. Number one, good health. Number two, good luck next year. Yes. We're still going to be rooting for the Pirates. I know, man. That's all right. I appreciate it. Steve, thanks for Thank having you, me. Thank you, my friend. Pleasure. All the best. Pleasure. Thank this you. is Steve Adubato. That is Greg Herenda. This is One on One. Be right back. <laughs> Luis Robles, who is a captain and goalkeeper of the great New York Red Bulls. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Growing up as a kid, was soccer your thing? No. No, it wasn't, actually. What was? Baseball. So my dad comes from Puerto Rico. He was drafted into the military back way in the day during the Korean conflict. And so eventually, much, much further down the road, when he had me and my brother, he put a lot of baseball in our life. It was, whether it was the Yankees or the Mets, he just grew up with that, and, and that was his thing. And, and up until about 11 or 12 years old, that was my thing. So, so soccer comes into your life. You get the bug, you're good at it. But the goalkeeping position, explain to people, we'll get into a whole range of other um, partnerships and collaborations that... Uh, Luis and the Red Bulls are involved in, but I'm curious, goalkeeper versus the rest of the folks on the team? Well, I smile because he said, I get the bug and I'm good at it, and that's, that's totally not the case. I, no. wasn't, I wasn't good at all, actually. Stop it! No, so my story starts with me getting cut. Uh, 11 years old, I try out for a soccer team, and the only reason I try out for this travel team is because my best friend, Sean, was trying out for the team, and now he, he was very good. He was one of the best players on the team. And yet, after the first day, they said, thanks for coming out, but don't worry about coming out tomorrow, right? To you? Yeah, to me. And so what ended up transpiring is a couple weeks later, their goalkeeper is not sure if they want to do it full time, and, and Sean suggests my name, and the, call coach, the coach calls me up and asks, hey, if you're willing to play goalie and just goalie, right, <laughs> you can be on the team. And for me, it just seemed like an opportunity to be able to hang out with Sean more often. And so... That's when I caught the bug. Standing in goal, defending shots, that challenge of standing there and trying to defend the goal was something that really spoke to me. And at that point on, it would just become a passion and obsession. And and slowly I became better and better and better. But as I look back at my career, 
there are so many opportunities that came out of nothing that I sort of seized, but it wasn't, it wasn't purely because of talent. I gotta tell you, you just helped an awful lot of kids and parents of those kids who are dealing with who didn't make the team, who's on the B team, who, whatever. So thank you for that. Yeah, no problem. Um, talk about the connection between you, your colleagues with the Red Bulls, and Hackensack Meridian Health, because I know there's an initiative, it's called Child Life. Correct. Talk about right. it. And so it's something that comes from Hackensack Meridian, but the partnership started when I joined here at the New York Red Bulls. I think one thing that's incredible about our organization is that we, we don't just talk about being in the community, we actually do it. You see the front office, the sales team, the players are constantly engaging in a way, whether it's visiting hospitals, showing up to activities, or inviting kids to come in, design shoes. Last year, we had this really cool initiative where patients at the hospital came to the training facility, they designed shoes, we had an, a shoe artist put the graphics on the shoe, and then at one game, uh, at one selected game, the kids came and we presented the gifts to them. And it's things like that that really permeate throughout the organization that is ingrained in the culture. Mm. And so for a kid who also had parents that were constantly talking about giving back, giving back, it became low hanging fruit to join in with all these activities. And so now what's occurred is the last couple of years we've had this partnership and then exclusively myself and my wife, we've also come alongside and say, hey, what can we do? How can we help? And by the way, you have three young children. Three young kids. And, and that's actually where the relationship continues to deepen is all three of my kids are born here in Jersey. They were born at Hackensack Hospital. And so we just have an affinity towards them. And, and when that partnership already existed with the Red Bulls, it became easier for us to get involved. I know there are two kids, uh, Diego and Jack, I Correct. think, and they're the ones who were selected for this initiative connected to child life. Do they actually, what do they do? Do they hang out with you guys, spend a day with you, and then what? Play, get on the field, do what? So I'm not sure what the selection process was like to select them, but it seems like we have two great candidates. And what we're trying to do is just brighten their life. We know that they're going through certain situations in their life. Certain challenges. Absolutely. That can be discouraging at times. And so for us, the challenge is simply how can we be a bright spot, a positive uh, impactor in their life. And so what we're hoping to do at least is they, I'm going to get to see what it's like in their, a day in their life, and then on the flip side, we're gonna invite them to the training facility and they're gonna see what it's like a day in my life. And this will ultimately culminate with them taking in a game at Red Bull Arena. That's awesome. And this actually started with the Tackle Kids Cancer Initiative, which we know very well. In fact, you should go on our website, we'll connect you to the, the football giants and the folks at that uh, healthcare system, Hacksack Community and Health, are connected to it as well. They're the ones who are driving that initiative. They've helped an awful lot of young people. Let me ask you this. Young people, I'm curious. Our kids are all involved in sports one way or another. The, the disappointments, and you talked about that before, the frustration, the not making the team and, or not making the A team, whatever that means, or starting. Or What have you told, and your kids are very young, but given the fact that you're an elite athlete, my question is how do you give us advice? As parents, what should we be focusing on? What should we not be focusing on when it comes to our kids in sports? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is that they should be having fun, right? At the end of the day, they're kids, and they may have dreams. I was six years old when I told my parents I was going to be a professional baseball player. So I, I knew early on it wasn't a joke. It was like everything about my life was geared towards being a professional athlete. I, it transitioned later to 14 years old when I had to pick between baseball and soccer. And at that moment, I went with soccer, not knowing which one was going to provide a better outcome. And yet, the reason I chose soccer is simply because of my friends, right? Sean was still right. in the picture there, and, and my three best friends played soccer, so I wanted to be with them as much as possible. And though they're, I'm very competitive and I'm very self-motivated, the underlining foundation to all of it was having fun with my friends. And so when parents ask, and I get this question all the time, like, what are the secrets? What, how, what advice can I give to my kids? It, it's always shrouded in this idea of having fun. Fun. But when it's not being fun. When it's not, when it's not fun, you're going to lose motivation. That's and right. then at that point, you're going to force yeah. something upon them. And if they're not motivated to do it themselves, it's a losing battle. But there's something else I say, and disappointments are inevitable. Right? Failures, disappointments, Not just in all sports. of it. It's inevitable. Yes, in life and education and relationships. But discouragement is a, is, a, is a mindset. Right? So if you can help your kid by encouraging them,
by supporting them, then they're going to be able to get over the disappointments. But if their disappointments transition into a mindset of discouragement, right. it becomes that much harder. Yeah. Real quick, 30 seconds. Connection between sports. I'm fascinated by leadership. I'm a student of it, teach it, coach it, think about it real quick. You are the goalkeeper. You are the captain. Are you the leader? I'm one of the leaders. What right? does it mean to you to be the so leader? So we have a saying that we learned when we went on a... Um, on experience at West Point, right? West Point's this great yep. academy that it's just, awesome. it's a factory manufacturing leaderships, right? Or leaders. And they told us that good teams are accountable to their leaders, but great teams are accountable to each other, right? And so at that moment, you realize that in order for us to be great, they can't be accountable to just me or the coach. That's right. We have to develop within them the confidence that they can lead. And if we have a bunch of people leading, but also understanding what it takes to work, I think we're going to be that much more successful. It's helped a lot of people. I hope so. Thank you. And wish you all the best. Thanks for having me. Okay. This is Luis Robles, who is the captain and goalkeeper of the New York Red Bulls here on One on One. Great guest. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Hackensack Meridian Health, Seton Hall University, Valley Bank, NJM Insurance Group, NJ Best, New Jersey's 529 College Savings Plan, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, and by Fedway Associates. Promotional support provided by Tap Into TV and by New Jersey Monthly. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.